Hey, what's going on guys? So uh, today we're taking a look at that Boker knife. Now this is the knife I uh, showed that was the most uncomfortable lockback, <laughs> which is very unfortunate. Um, but, uh, but I still think the knife overall is pretty damn cool. I do not think that it's necessarily worth the price tag, but that's always subjective. It just depends on who you're talking to. I would say a lot. I, you know, I, I always want to say most, but that, you know, I'm not taking polls here. I would say a lot of people would say that's crazy what they're asking for this knife. Um, but, you know, if you're a collector of it or if you just want this specific knife, it is what it is. So um, this is the package. I'm going to, un you know, unbox the whole thing to show you what it looks like. Because I think the, the display case it comes in is kind of interesting as well. Then we'll talk about the knife and I'll let you know what it actually cost. So we get a little sleeve here that kind of protects everything for storage. We get our Boker bag with our paperwork. This actually has the same paperwork in like four different languages, all right? And as you can see here, which someone did comment, it is a Boker Boxer Demast. The problem is that the person who commented, who, I mean, they totally nailed it, except the price. There's actually a bunch of versions of this knife, all right? So what they thought it cost, which was already a lot, it actually cost even more. So here's the presentation. Now, this presentation box is a first. I haven't seen this before, at least from Boker. This has a floating design. So it's kind of cool. I mean, obviously it's an expensive knife. Um, if you have a cool office, you know, this would look nice on like an office uh, shelf or something, you know, behind your desk. So that's kind of cool. It's, it's uh, well, let me show you. So there's a magnetic piece on the back, all right? So the front lifts up. And this is literally just two thin stretched pieces of like, plastic it's a thin plastic so all it is it's pressure held there in place you know what i'm saying so as you close it it's almost like a vacuum seal that's what keeps it floating right so it's kind of cool unless you get a little cut in it and then it's garbage <laughs> so that's uh something you have to be careful of and you can see it it's like smudged and stuff because the knife wasn't totally clean so you have to be careful cleaning that so here's the knife i did keep the little protective tip on there so the boker uh, Damast. Now this one here, like I said, they, they have several models of this and I want to say that each year they do a different version. And this one has a very, very cool Damascus pattern on here. All right. And we're going to talk about this in just a second, but I just want to show you the knife up close. Nice bolsters, nice micarta handle scales, a little contouring in here, a little lanyard tube. There's that uncomfortable lock, right? These are, uh, in fact, numbered. These are collector's knives. This one is number 399. You can see the back of that Damascus blade. All right, so I'm going to read this little excerpt. Actually, you can pause the screen right there if you want, so you can read along. But this is directly from Boker's website about this knife. It says, the Boker Boxer, designed by Raphael Durand from theirs, T-H-I-E-R-S, is a classic two-handed knife that is extremely popular. In this particularly noble version, the traditional pocket knife is equipped with a dark blade of dragon skin Damascus by Bertie Rietveld, which is hardened to 58 uh, Rockwell hardness. The South African custom knife maker is considered the country's first Damascus smith and has been forging high performance Damascus with unusual patterns since 1991. The blade is locked by a sturdy back lock and has a generous fracasso. The decorative stainless steel bolster uh, bear the groove typical of Raphael Durand. The handle scales are made of polished red burlap micarta and are very comfortable to hold. The handy size is the perfect compromise between pocket suitability and versatility in use. With reinforced lanyard hull, handmade in the Boker Knife Manufactory Sologen, delivery with individual serial number in a noble floating display with certificate of authenticity. So, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I mean, it, it's super cool. It's very comfortable. It locks up perfect. It has a very cool handmade Damascus blade. This dragon skin design. I'm not sure how many different knives have it. I think it's wicked. It's very, very cool. All right, made in solid in Germany. It's one of Boker's, you know, top end knives. So if you like Boker, this is as good as it gets, right? As far as this design goes. So, price. Now I'm gonna go, we're, we're gonna look at this on a couple different dealers just so you can see a consistency here. So let's go ahead and Google this real quick. 
Boker Boxer Damast. So directly from Boker's website here, remember this is MSRP, no one's paying this price, but it comes in at $756.95. So it is available if you want to buy it directly from them. You can certainly do so. There is the specs on it. All right, there you go. So what is the real price? Because we're not, we're definitely not uh, paying that. So let's see what's at, uh, what it costs at the dealers. All right, so first up, let's check out Knife Center. Knife Center has this exact knife for sale for $657.95. So that's expensive. Let's see, knives and tools. I have never seen this site before. Um, they're selling it for $430.95. This actually might be the, um, the price that the original person had said it was. So maybe that's where they got the price from. I'll accept that. Let's see. What is uh, $430.95? Hmm. Hang on a second. $430.95, right? $430.95 euro to US dollar. All right. $430.95 euro. All right, so the original person who commented, this is where they got the information. That particular website, which I don't know, I'm assuming they're located outside the US, has it for sale for $470. So that makes perfect sense, because I had mentioned like, hey, you got everything, like you nailed it, but the price is more expensive, and that, that's why, because they got it from that particular website. So hey, if you're looking to buy it, knivesandtools.com seems to have it at the cheapest price possible. Um, it does say in stock, and let me uh, real quick, let's go to About Us. I'm just curious where they're located. I'm just scanning through here real quick. You can look with me if you want. Looks like they came out in 1999. Belgium. No. Um, several international websites. United Kingdom, Ireland, Belgium, Netherlands, France, Spain, Italy, Denmark, Sweden, Germany, and Austria. So yeah, obviously they're they're overseas. All right, so I don't know if they ship to the U.S. or not, but let's look at uh, some other sites here. So I know it was on. I know it was on uh, Blade HQ. So let's check that out. Blade HQ, which is one of my big go-to's when I'm looking at different knives as well. Boker, Boxer. Maybe they have some other versions too. I could show you. So here it is on their website. That same $657.95, I think Knife Center was the same price. So there are cheaper versions. Like if you like the knife, you definitely wouldn't pay that. Like I wouldn't pay that. I traded for this. But here's a plain version, and it looks like almost half the price, $353.95. Right? So there's no um my car to handle, it's a wood handle, but it's the same knife. You know, satin blade. I'm actually curious what's the blade steel. So it's actually desert ironwood, which is very nice for a handle material. And this one's in Bowler N690. All right, so let's uh, back it up here. Here's a version without the bolster for 179. That actually looks really nice. Oh, that's not even the same knife. What am I, what am I talking about? This looks like a slip joint version. This is the same knife, but not a lockback. This is 216, my Carta. That one looks really nice looking. A black one. All right, so here's here's a, a similar version black micarta regular blade here 334 also bowler n690 flat ground so yeah i mean it looks like it's expensive regardless right this just happens to be you know the the top shelf one i guess for 2023 because I, I i've seen other ones with different damascus as well uh, just in my very quick research so very cool knife is it a 650 dollar you know cool knife you know, I, I, like I said, I wouldn't, not for this particular knife. It's a fantastic knife. I mean, for the price, I don't know why there's no sheath. I guess they expect people to just have this in their office, you know, just on display, that no one's going to use the thing. I want to use it. I want to carry it. I just told you it's kind of uncomfortable. I mean, it's the most uncomfortable if I were using it all the time. Is it the end of the world? No. I can, of course, you know, open this and, and cut some stuff with it and put it back. It's not like, you know, ripping my thumb open. It's just super, super uncomfortable. That's all. Um, you know, so I could carry it if I wanted to. It's just, it's one of those things. I just wanted to check it out when it was offered to me. The person who had this, 
uh, they won it in a contest. It was a giveaway. And it just wasn't their thing. And I get it. Most people would not, it wouldn't be their thing. It might be cool to display, but they just wanted to trade it for, you know, some other nicer knives they can carry and use and enjoy because they like those styles more. And uh, I agreed to the trade because, you know, out with the old, in with the new. And I would never have tried this knife otherwise. Like I said, I would never buy this knife. Even if I had the money, there's so many other knives I'd want before this. But having it, like I said, it's actually a really beautiful knife. I just don't like the, the cutouts on that that um, that uh, lock. But the Damascus is, like I said, super cool. It's very unique. It's a cool looking knife. I really do like the handles as well. For me, what am I gonna do with it? I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll find a, a place to display it. Um, I wish I had a really cool office. I don't. <laughs> I don't have much room, you know, to display thing. It would look really nice in a, in a clean modern office just to have this on a, on a shelf you know maybe another knife next to it or something it would look pretty pretty nice um but like i said i don't know i'm on the fence i might i might still carry and use it anyway i really don't know yet uh, or it might just sit around and be a trade item for for years all right stuff like this is it's a little bit of a niche item not everyone's going to be into it or even you know value it at the same um price that it goes for so yeah i mean the display's cool though <laughs> so that wraps around and that's it so we have like a floating design kind of interesting and different so yeah i mean a lot of people guess like 150 bucks 160 bucks 200 bucks that's where i would think it would be at if i didn't know and i had to guess my honest guess would probably be 200 to 250 dollars uh be, just because it's cool damascus that, that would be it i would think the 250 tops for this knife so even when it was first offered to me i saw the pictures and stuff and when I heard the price, I was, I'm like, wow, like that's, that's crazy. And I mean, you know, someone, I think someone commented, I, I want to say I shared the video on Facebook and someone on Facebook might've commented like knife collectors are the dumbest people alive. And that's not true. I would say collectors in general, uh, but it's not the dumbest. It's, it's just a, a negative way of putting, you know, the, the fact that collectors will pay, uh, you know, crazy prices for things they just really want that's it there's a fulfillment there when you have a collection you want to get certain things and you will absolutely pay top dollar for those items it's not dumb it brings you joy and i, I use cars all the time like some people just have like a 1500 dollars car because they just need to get to work and they certainly can't you know ride a bicycle in the winter 50 miles you know or 150 miles so they have a car right they don't like cars they don't want a car they don't want to maintain a car and then there's people who just really enjoy cars as a hobby. And they have a $80,000 car that they bring to car shows. And they go out and they, they buff it, you know, with Q-tips, you know. So when you value something as a hobby and an interest, you, you put more value into it. Not everyone's going to pay $80,000 for a car. Well, maybe in, you know, 2030, that's what a, a regular <laughs> sedan's going to cost. Um, but you know what I'm saying. So when it comes to knives, obviously we value knives as knife collectors more than the common person. If I showed this knife to just average people and said, how much do you think this knife is? And people have no concept of knife design or cost or anything like that. They might go like, I don't know, that looks really, really nice. Is that like a hundred dollars? You know, and you know, it, it's not their fault. They don't know. Uh, but that would be a lot to a lot of people. They have no idea that people are paying $400 for a pocket knife or $800 for a pocket knife, or they're paying $100 for a pocket knife, but they did that 80 times. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it is what it is, but I think it's beautiful. I think it's awesome. I think the display is cool. I think that the um, the fact that they scalloped that lock sucks because, uh, and I also think that there should be a sheath that comes. There should absolutely be a nice leather sheath that comes with this. Um, so whoever buys it has the option to actually carry and use it. But uh, we'll see. Like I said, maybe I'll just use it around the house. Maybe I'll just save it for a trade item. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. But I, I did want to check it out. It was an opportunity. Once in a lifetime, I don't think this knife will ever be offered ever again. So I jumped on it. And now I own it. That's, that's how that worked. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.